Fordyce, and on today's episode of Rio's Tying the Fly, I'm going to be tying a tarpon fly with coyote fur. This fly uses a size 2 heavy short shank saltwater hook, and I'm also going to be using 140 denier olive thread. We're going to start by wrapping the shank of this hook with our thread and making sure to cover the whole shank so that you don't end up with any material slipping off or pulling out on you. Go ahead and cut off that excess. The next material I'm going to be tying in is a set of bee chain eyes and olive. So I'll go ahead and do a couple of wraps in the middle there so that it ends up perpendicular to the eye of the hook. I'm going to do some figure eights or cross wrapping here. And then next I'm going to do some over and under. I'm going to do over the shank, under the eye. Over the shank, under the eye, over the shank. And each time you want to do a little bit of a tighten. So we do that, tight, there we go. Now do a couple more cross wraps. At this point, if you'd like, you're also welcome to add a drop of glue for reinforcement. To tie in these eyes well, it means your hook and your fly is going to last much longer. You don't want that to end up twisting on you at all. And a couple knocks with a, with a fish or with a rock are both going to make that kind of twist and turn on you if you don't tie it in really well. So we want to make sure that we do a good job. Plus a tarpon is a, is a fish you don't want to mess with if you end up having that knot tied in there really well. So now we're going to go ahead and wrap back to where I stopped the thread at the beginning. And I'm going to tie in a piece of monofilament to use as a, a method to keep this from fouling. You don't want the tail to wrap around the hook shank. So we're going to go ahead and take 20 pound Rio hard mono. And I'm going to tie it in on the top of the hook shank here so that it is curved up and off the back of my hook, as you can see. I'm going to wrap forward just to make sure that's all covered with thread. Once I get back to the back, I'm going to take this and fold it so that it sticks straight up. Now I could cut this a little bit shorter. It doesn't need to be that long. Now I'm going to wrap around this monofilament piece so that you treat it kind of like you would a post if you were doing a parachute post. You do a few wraps, let that thread slide down, and then do a couple wraps in front, a few wraps around the monofilament, and slide it down. Now that makes sure that that's not going to end up falling flat on you because you want it kicked up to keep that marabou up. Now I can wrap, grab my marabou. I've already pre-prepped this feather, so now I can manipulate this, push it back, and I could tie it in. So I'm going to go ahead. I want this, in order to keep this fly proportionate, I want to make it about two and a half to three times the length of the actual hook shank. So I'll take this and tie it in right on top of my monofilament. Make sure you're tying it in nice and tight. Go ahead and cut those pieces off. Doesn't have to look perfect once you're wrapping over here because that's going to get covered up by another material anyways. Now, to keep this from wrapping and fouling around that hook shank, I use the mono to create a post. So now I'm going to do wraps around the monofilament as well, or and the marabou, just like I did before with when I just had mono and no marabou. Do a few wraps in front, a few around the marabou and the mono, a couple in front. And see how it kicks that marabou straight up so it doesn't want to actually do any collapsing or wrapping around that hook shank. And that's exactly what you want to do on a tarpon fly. The next step that we're going to do is we want to add a little bit of depth of color to this tail. So what I'm going to do is add in some arctic fox fur. As you can see, this has different tip colors on it. It's got a little bit of a fading color. It's got a lot of variation that really, really gives it a nice tone to the actual fly when it's completed. So I'll go ahead and take a pinch of this and cut it off right at the base by the hide. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to pull out some of those under 
for pieces so that it isn't too bulky. And you want to make sure this is proportionate. And by proportionate, you want to make sure that you can still see both colors. So I want to make it so that this doesn't go beyond halfway up the olive marabou. So once I think I've got that in the right place, I'm going to pinch it with my left hand and tie this down. Then I could take my left hand, hold it up while my right hand cuts off the excess. For this stage, we're going to be using a dubbing whirler, which is this tool right here. I'm going to go ahead and take my coyote fur. As you can see, coyote is very, uh, there's a lot of different tones and hues to it, even though it's pretty gray and tan in color. This also has some pretty cool guard hairs, which give it some depth. What I'm going to do is part off a section here. I'm going to go ahead and section some of it off, separate it, and then cut it. If you have too much under fur when you're doing a dubbing loop, it ends up sticking together pretty bad. I want to pinch right where the guard furs are and pull out some of this excess under fur that's here. It's going to make the fly too fluffy and not sink the way we want it to. We don't want it to sink necessarily, but we want it to cut through that surface tension. So I'm going to go ahead and form my dubbing loop. By doing that, I'm going to pull off seven or so inches of thread and cradle it with my forefinger here. Next, I'm going to wrap back up onto my hook shank and wrap it back to where I started. What you can do here is you can actually take your thread and do one loop around your dubbing loop and then wrap over it and that will allow it to immediately create this perfect little V here against your hook shank. Then wrap back up to behind the bead chain eyes and leave your thread there. Now I'm going to take my coyote fur and place it right in between about halfway up the fur. There you go. Take more and place this right in between as well as piece. All right, now once I've got that stacked in there, I'm going to go ahead and take my scissors and I'm going to cut it. Doesn't have to be perfect. All you're trying to do is make it so it's not as long on that back end. You want the tip ends to be longer than the fuzzy part. Now I can take my dubbing whirler that has these two hooks here and hook them carefully onto the bottom piece of thread and then gently pull your finger out. Take my thumb and forefinger and pinch right there and then I'm going to spin my dubbing whirler. Once it starts shrinking up and accordioning up, then I, can, I know it's ready. I let go with my left hand and it should spin this around. Do another spin just for good measure. Now I can take my bodkin and go through, always going along the same direction as your thread and pick it out. All right, once we pick some of that out, we could go through and wrap up the hook shank with it. Making sure the entire time you want to make sure that you're pulling back at the same time. So pull back, kind of like your palmering hackle. Okay. Pull back, tie down. Pull back, tie down. There we go. Once you get to right behind those bead chain eyes, you can tie this off. Just going to wrap it a couple times and I could cut off that excess piece from the dubbing loop. Make sure all those fibers are going forward. Now I can do my whip finishing. Hook it towards me. I'm sure it doesn't cut a couple for pieces, but that's all right. Away from me. Now we cut this excess thread off and we have ourselves the perfect natural looking buggy tarpon fly that works fantastic in the Everglades. It works fantastic for snook, tarpon, you name it. Just about everything out there will eat this. 
and it is an amazing all-around natural no-flash tarpon fly. Thanks for tying with me today.